a really big God bless you friends. I hope you're well today. I hope that you're well today. I just wanted to come on here and just to share a few thoughts with you. Friends, it's time for us to come up closer to Jesus like never before, to come into the secret realm of his presence. It is not, it is not, friends, it is not gaining knowledge. It is not through endless teaching of peripheral stuff. It's not gaining knowledge about the end times. It's not gaining knowledge about all of this stuff. People like to fill their minds with all sorts of things and they think that by that they're getting closer to Jesus. Friends, that is not getting us closer to Jesus and it concerns me greatly. It concerns me greatly that people think this is getting to know Jesus. This, this knowledge puffs up. It makes us judgmental. That's why there's so much judgment in the church today about who knows what. Because knowledge puffs up. Friends, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When we fear the Lord, we don't want to fit our stuff through full of peripheral rubbish. That's the problem, friends, in the church today. People sit under endless hours of teaching, whether it's in the church or whether it's on YouTube. And by that, friends, they think they're saved. They think they're saved. They think they know Jesus. Friends, it's not about filling their minds full of this. It's not about they fill their minds full of this stuff and they think that by it they are saved. Friends, Jesus, he did lots of wonderful things. He spoke about lots of lovely things and he had lots of disciples that followed him. Lots of disciples followed him. They, they loved the manifestations of the Spirit. They loved it, the miraculous. They loved the healings. They loved the healings, they loved everything. And then Jesus said, he required something of the disciples. He said, unless you take of my body, unless you eat of my body and drink of my blood, then you can have no part in me. And they got offended. They got offended, friends. The gospel is just about taking of Jesus. It's not about taking of all of these peripheral teachings that people just feel their minds full of and even so many books are written about. Friends, it's just rubbish. It's just rubbish compared to knowing Jesus. Friends, are we going to know Christ and him crucified? Are we going to know him and Christ crucified? Or are we going to fill ourselves full of all of this knowledge that puffs up and that we somehow think that by it we are saved? Friends, we've got to come into a secret, secret place, a deeper place. Why? Because there's great trouble coming upon the earth, friends. And if we don't know Christ, if we don't have faith in God, then we are going to fall by the wayside. We're going to have all sorts of fears and terrors. When they come upon the earth, friends, because our foundation is not solid, it's, it's rickety. Our foundation is based on all of the teaching that we've listened to and that we've taken in. And we think that if we know this, that and the other about the end times and what's happening and as it was in the days of Noah and all of that stuff. And we think that by that, friends, that we're going to be OK, we're secure, that we're somehow saved. Friends, that is not what saves us. Faith in Christ Jesus alone saves us, that we deny ourselves, we take up our cross and follow him. That means we deny ourselves, we deny our day, the day that we want to just do what we want to do. We deny it. We deny ourselves, friends. We deny ourselves when someone has upset us and we've got angry. We have to deny ourselves and be sorry and not hold that against that person, not hold that anger in our hearts and let it fester. We've got to deny ourselves, friends. We've got to deny the food that we love. Do you, do you love too much food? Do you love drinking alcohol? Friends, maybe we've got to deny it. Maybe we've got to deny it. Do we go to the pub? I've seen that so many people, friends, so many people today, they got a bit closer to Jesus. They got a bit closer to God during the whole rollout of all of this fiasco over the last three years. They got a little bit closer to Jesus because they were afraid about what was coming upon the earth. They thought, oh, it's the end times. But now they've gone back to a normal life. They've gone back to a normal life, friends. But friends, it's not going back to normal. But people seem to have forgotten that. And I, I see I see that people have they've forgotten it. And they, they just want to get on with the normal life. I see it on Facebook. I see it on their feeds and stuff. And they're in the nightclub. They're in the... They're, they're, they're in the pub they're drinking and they're and I'm thinking what what is what is appealing in the world what is appealing in the world that's where demon spirits hang out demon spirits hang out there why can't we have the discernment to know that we are we are getting uh, um, affected and touched by demonic forces if we go into these places unless we're going in to preach the glorious gospel of course unless we're going in we are fully then protected by the Lord Jesus Christ because we're in there for him to glorify his name and to bring his salvation friends but if we're going there to entertain ourselves and to just feed our flesh then we are really opening ourselves up to more darkness and if we think that well because I know these teachings and that teachings and I go to church on a Sunday then, we're not, then I'm okay friends this is not the Christian life the Christian life is one of total self-denial 
self-denial of what I want and it has to become what God wants and that is what death to self is we die to our own self and we live for Christ Jesus it's the only way that we can see the life of Christ rise in us friends trouble is coming trouble is coming and what we're going to do some suddenly become all spiritual again and turn back to God just because a little bit of trouble is coming friends we've got to have we've got to have a foundation we've got to have a foundation because there is great trouble coming upon the earth I don't know what's going to happen next friends maybe a nuclear bomb's going to go off in Europe blamed on Putin or maybe it is Putin maybe Putin lets lets a missile go I know that the globalists would absolutely love that if a, if a nuclear bomb went off they could install their cashless society overnight they're waiting for another crisis friends another crisis that, that they can actually bring about what they have already set up the infrastructure is all set up the cashless society is just waiting to be rolled out they just need another crisis to make it happen to make people bow at the feet of government to make people bow at the feet of big pharma what will they roll out friends another vaccine an anti-radiation vaccine and all can you imagine the media frenzy can you imagine the media frenzy on the tv the countless millions of people that have died and the countless millions you imagine all the images that they have on the tv the people in the hospitals you don't want to be dying from this cancer what you need what you need is to bow at the god of big pharma and you'll be absolutely fine friends who are we going to bow to are we going to bow to government or are we going to bow to god are we going to be so taken by fear i don't know friends if a nuclear bomb is going to go off or not i'm just saying it would serve the globalist world and it would be a crisis that they could easily use to install the cash this society which has already been set up discussed and they mentioned it in davos it's all there all the infrastructure was set up over this whole three-year period it's ready to roll out at any point but they need to bring fear into the people to make it happen and what are we going to do friends what are we going to do it could be another uh, a manufactured virus they've got all the patents for the viruses haven't they and uh, could it be another manufactured virus jesus prophesied didn't he that would be deadly pestilences pestilences around the earth at the end and maybe they'll roll one out which is a bit harsher than covid and uh and we'll all have to be vaccinated. Everyone will have to be coming under the umbrella of the globalists, friends. And if you don't, then, then you won't be able to buy stuff. We witnessed it in Italy. We witnessed it in Italy. I'm not talking conspiracy theory, friends. We actually witnessed it. We were in the dead of night discussing, discussing how we were going to live and survive if we were blocked out of the supermarket because that was the only place left so the supermarket and the pharmacy we were blocked from the bank we were blocked from the buses we were blocked from the boats we couldn't leave the island we couldn't go into a restaurant we couldn't sit outside a restaurant we couldn't go into shops unless we had the mark this is not conspiracy theory friends they attempted to roll it out then they need another crisis to break the will of the people and then they will install it friends what are we going to do as christians are we just going to go with it and say no 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 this is not the mark of the beast this is not the mark of the beast Friends, when it happens globally, and this is the only way to buy and sell, if you've got the relevant paperwork, and you can only have the relevant paperwork because you, you're up to date with your big pharma, your big pharma pharmacaia, your big pharma sorcery, witchcraft. You can see why it's evil, friends. You can see why it's evil. I'm not saying that all medications are evil. I'm not saying that. I know they have, that medications help countless people. I know that, so I'm not saying it's all evil. I'm just saying that Big Pharma itself, that, that, that beast, is evil. It's evil because it causes people to bow down and they don't want people well. They don't want people well. They want people sick. They want people sick so that they can continue in their business. It doesn't, uh, it's not rocket science, friends. It's not rocket science. Big Pharma clearly doesn't want us well. They want us ill and, and all of this last period of... Uh, few years has, has really helped big pharma greatly because there are so many more sick people than ever before filling up our hospitals and overwhelming our staff etc 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 it was all in the planning friends all in the planning and they know exactly what they were doing because they haven't even stopped administering this even though they know the crippling effects that it has had on so many people around the world friends it's time for us to come up to a higher place into the secret realm of god because trouble is coming friends a great trouble is coming a trouble is coming to london i don't know when 
uh, but I, I saw it in the spirit when I was there preaching and the Holy Spirit just put it in my heart to say there would be some days of where the, everything would go dark in London. Everything would go dark in London for a number of days. It would all come back, but it would cause people's hearts to be afraid, to be fearful, and the government would be able to step in and take even more of people's hearts and lives as a result of it. The power would go down, the internet would go down. And of course you wouldn't be able to go into the shops because the electric doors wouldn't open, the tills wouldn't work, etc, etc, etc. Friends, there is a great trouble coming upon the earth and it's time for us to come into the secret realm of God and when we know Jesus Christ and him crucified and him alone, then we've got nothing to fear, nothing to fear whatsoever. They can't use the tool of fear to control us because we are under, we are under the power of God. Friends, let's follow government when they are... Uh, um, decreeing the dictates of God and there is much there is much in the law that is uh, that lines up with scripture and we follow that friends but when it causes us to break the law of God and to sin against him then we don't need to follow it friends we do not need to follow it as we see in the Bible they did not follow they did not follow unrighteous laws ever they, they always continued to preach the gospel they were imprisoned they were beaten they were flogged they were murdered Moses stood against Pharaoh. Friends, whenever, whenever the leader goes against God and, his, and God's will, we have no obligation to follow. Everyone quote, quotes Romans 13, which Paul wrote, but Paul also uh, clearly didn't mean what we have made it to mean because he ended up in prison, he ended up martyred, he was whipped, he was beaten by the authorities for disobeying, for disobeying the law of the day. Friends, it is time for us to seek God and to die to self and to say, God, I don't care whether I'm imprisoned, whether I'm uh, killed for my faith, um, but I want to come into your presence. I want to come into your presence. I want to know you. And it's not knowing endless, endless theologies and doctrines and all of this knowledge which just puffs up. The beginning of with the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God, friends, and few people fear God today. And that's why they have no wisdom. That's why they have no wisdom. Jesus said, will I find faith on the earth when I come? Yes, friends, he's going to find faith on the earth, but not the kind of faith, not the kind of faith that uh, uh, he's looking for. He's going to find faith in government, but is he going to find faith in him? Are we going to put our trust in him? So many people put their trust in so many earthly things, they don't even realise it. They deny it. They deny it. Friends, it is time for us to come into a deeper union with Christ that we become true disciples not just fair with the Christians that just, you know, when everything's okay, we just go back to our normal life. But friends, nothing is okay in this world. It's gone, it's gone to pot. Evil is coming out. Evil is coming out. And it's being exposed. Look at the Dalai Lama. Look at the Dalai Lama. Imagine what he does in private if that is what he does in public on live television, friends. And they're also trying to normalise this behavior they're trying to normalize this behavior and even his office said he just likes to tease people that's teasing people that's what he does to tease people he teases little children by doing that that is disgusting behavior friends and um so many people disappointed disappointed in a in a holy man friends he's not holy never was holy never fooled me never fooled me not for one minute and there's the evidence right there and you might say well what about the catholic priests they never fool me either, friends. They're not following Jesus either. They're following their father, the devil. Just because they wear a frock and they're in what they call the church doesn't mean that they know Jesus. They don't know Jesus if they're getting up to all, all kinds of evil. And I'm not just and I'm not just throwing stones at the Catholic Church, friends. I know that it, 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 it can be a widespread problem. And it's for those who do not know Jesus, friends. It's for those who are not following Jesus. You can't know Jesus just because you call yourself a Christian, just because you say oh, I'm part of the Church of England or the Catholic Church or any denomination doesn't mean we're a Christian. No, friends, only those who have really surrendered their hearts and their lives and their souls to Jesus and they say, that's it, I'm following you no matter what the cost. Doesn't mean we're perfect, friends, doesn't mean we're perfect, but we're following Jesus and we're saying, I'm going to give my day to you, I'm going to give my life to you, I'm not going to do what I want to do, I'm going to do what you would do. What would you do? What would you do today? And I'm going to do it. Friends, let's not spiritualize everything and imagine that somehow we're doing God's will because we're spiritualizing everything or that we're sitting there endlessly pouring over teaching videos about this, that and the other. 
No, friends, we've got to die to self. We've got to die to our own sinful desires. And when we do, friends, we will break free from the power of sin. No longer will it pull us. No longer will we be pulled into it. No longer will we, will we be tempted to follow those evil ways. It will be broken in us, and that will be the evidence that we are following Jesus. Friends, the disciples, they, they followed Jesus up until the point up until the point and then they, they they loved they loved all the miracles who doesn't love, love a good miracle they loved they loved the healings and so many people today looking for revival not looking for jesus in their own heart they're looking for an outward sign an outward sign they're looking out there where is it where, where's the revival oh there's a revival there there's a revival here friends god is saying where's the revival in your own heart friends revival isn't an outward thing it's an inward working of the heart because we died to self We've died to self. So many people looking for all sorts of stuff. And they, this, these, these disciples, they followed Jesus because they were seeing the, the, the exciting things. They were seeing multiplication of bread. They were seeing the blind eyes open. They were seeing the lame. They were seeing the lame walk. It's exciting, isn't it? It's exciting. But then Jesus called them to do something, basically die, to become one with Jesus in his death. And they were like, this is very offensive. Eat his flesh and... And, and drink his blood of course they didn't understand <clears throat> they didn't even understand because they weren't spiritually minded they were earthly minded though they were they were just driven by that flesh and so they were offended and they left and jesus said where are you going to leave me to he looked at the 12 are you going to leave me to they said where where would we go where would we go you have the words you have the words of eternal life friends this is what jesus is asking of us will you find faith on the earth if we say where would we go he's found faith on the earth so many people say uh, i know where i need to go I'll go to government. I'll go to, I'll, I'll go to my entertainment. I'll go here. I'll go there. Are we going to follow Jesus? Or are we going to follow our own desires when it's just a little bit too much? When the message is a little bit too much? Nobody wants to hear the message of dying to self. Nobody wants to hear it, friends. It's not very palatable to the flesh. The flesh wants all of the all of the exciting revival stuff, the manifestations. That's the evidence for many people that God is there. And when they don't see that, they think God isn't here. No, 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 this is not good. This is not good for me. Friends, let's not look for revival. Let's look for inner working in our own lives and in our hearts. Then we will see God move in a fundamental way, in a wonderful way in our own lives. We'll be free from the power of sin and we'll be free from fear and the controls of the globalists who will try and install their fear and bring their fear into us. Friends, it is time for us to come up closer, to come in deeper. Let's not misunderstand it, friends, and think it's listening to more and more teaching. It isn't. It isn't. We've a teaching. We're drowning in a sea of teaching, and much of it, friends, is is is, is peripheral. Let's understand, friends. We've got to come. We've got to come into a deeper realm to know Jesus, and it's not through knowledge. Endless knowledge just puffs up. But friends, the fear, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and that's why so many Christians are unwise today because they do not fear his holy presence. Ananias and Sapphira, they did not fear God's presence and they lied to the Holy Spirit. That was the church. That was not the Old Testament. They lied to the Holy Spirit and they died. They were carried out together, friends, and many, many, many people will be will, will die because they did not fear the Lord. They did not fear the Lord and his holy presence and in their hearts they lied to the Holy Spirit and they will die physically. They will die and they will be carried out together and they will be buried together. Friends, let's fear the Lord. Let's depart from evil. It's the beginning of wisdom, friends, to fear the Lord and his holy presence. He will protect us from the deadly pestilence when they roll out the next patented virus. Friends, we will be protected and even if we're not, where, O oh death, is your sting? Friends, we've got nothing to be afraid of. Friends, they're doing so much, aren't they, in this world at the moment? They're destroying our food sources, destroying the cattle. Have you seen the cattle, the thousands of cattle that died? That's not a one-off incident, friend. This has been happening for many months now. They're destroying our food sources and the remaining meat that's left, they're pumping it full, they're pumping the animals full of the mRNA. So if you didn't get it during the last three years, you're going to get it through eating the meat. They're pumping, they're pumping the, the food sources full of the mRNA, the vegetables as well, friends. We're not going to be able to avoid it unless we do something drastic and find our own food sources. 
I know the Bible says that we can drink deadly poison and you will in no way be harmed. But friends, let's not intentionally do it. Let's not intentionally do it. That means we could do it by accident and God will totally protect us. I know it. I know he will protect us. He will protect, he will protect us from the deadly pestilence. And the deadly pestilence, friends, is being pumped into our food sources. They are destroying our food sources and they are taking control. The globalists are taking full control, but we've got nothing to be afraid of, friends. Nothing to be afraid of because God, God is our God. So let's give our lives to Jesus today. Let's come into the secret realm of his presence and let's seek him while he may be found and beg him and beg him and say, Jesus, I want to lay my life down for you. Sorry, my heart is so hard. Sorry, my mind is so puffed up with knowledge. I don't want to have my mind puffed up with knowledge. I want, I want to have the wisdom. I want to fear the Lord. Depart from evil. I want to, I want to have wisdom that only comes by fearing the Lord. So really, big God bless you, friends. Pray for us today. We're about to go out to Maidstone. It's raining now, but it will dry up by the time we go out. And it's going to be a glorious time preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every blessing, and we thank you so much for praying for us. Have a lovely and wonderful day in the presence of Jesus.